Son of Gold Save My Mind And You Don't Die Give As You Receive And I Hope It Is Yes Satan This is the part 327 in the series Christ Forgiveness How to Manifest Immortality Season 2 And uh, the name of today's teaching is The Changeless Dwelling Place There is a place in you where this whole world has been forgotten, where no memory of sin and of illusion lingers still. There is a place in you which time has left and echoes of eternity are had. There is a resting place so still, no sound except a hymn to heaven rises up to gladden God the Father and the Son. Where both abide, are they remembered both? And where they are is heaven and is peace. Think not that you can change their dwelling place, for your identity abides in them, and where they are forever must you be. The changelessness of heaven is in you, so deep within, that nothing in this world but passes by unnoticed and unseen. The still infinity of endless peace surrounds you gently in its soft prayers, so strong and quiet, tranquil in the mind of its creator, nothing can intrude upon the sacred Son of God within. Here is the role the Holy Spirit gives to you who wait upon the Son of God and would behold him waken and be glad. He is part of you and you of him because he is his Father's Son and not for any purpose you may see in him. Nothing is asked of you but to accept the changeless and eternal that abide in him, for your identity is there. The peace in you can uh, but be found in him, and every thought of love you offer him but brings you nearer to your awakening to peace eternal and to endless joy. This sacred son of God is like yourself, the mirror of his father's love for you, the soft reminder of his father's love by which he was created and which still abides in him as it abides in you. Be very still and hear God's voice in him and let it tell you what his function is. He was created that you might be whole, for only the complete can be part, can be a part of God's completion which created you. There is no gift the Father asks of you, but that you see in all creation, but the sign and glory of his gift to you. Behold his Son, his perfect gift, in whom his Father signs forever, and to whom is all creation given as his own. Because he has it, is it given you, and where it lies in him, behold your peace. The quiet that surrounds you dwells in him, and from this quiet come the happy dreams in which your hands are joined in innocence. These are not hands that grasp that grasp in dreams of pain. They hold no sword, for they have they have left. They hold on every vain illusion of the world. And being empty, they receive, they receive instead a brother's hand in which completion lies. If you but knew the glorious goal that lies beyond forgiveness, you would not keep hold to any thought, however light the touch of evil on it may appear to be. For you would understand how great the cost of holding anything God did not give in minds that can direct the hand, uh, the hand to bless and lead God's son unto his father's house. Would you not want to be a friend to him? created by his father as his home? If God esteems him worthy of himself, would you attack him with the hands of hate? Who would lay bloody hands on heaven itself and hope to find peace, to find its peace? Your brother thinks he holds the hands of death, the hand of death. Believe him not. But learn instead how blessed are you who can release him just by offering him yours. A dream is given you in which he is your savior 
not your enemy in hate. A dream is given you in which you have forgiven him for all his dreams of death. A dream of hope you say with him, instead of dreaming separate dreams of dreaming e- separate dreams of hate, of dreaming evil separate dreams of hate. Why does it seem so hard to say this dream? Because unless the Holy Spirit gives the fu- the dream its function, it was made for hate and will continue in death's services. Its form it takes in some way calls for death. And those who serve the Lord of death have come to worship in a separated world, each with uh, his tiny spear and rusted sword to keep his ancient promises to die. Such is the core of fear in every dream that has been kept apart from use by him who sees a different function for a dream. When dreams are said, they lose the function of attack and separation, even though it was for this that every dream was made. Yet nothing in the world of dreams remains without the hope of change and betterment, for here is not where changelessness is found. Let us be glad indeed that this is so, and seek not the eternal in this world. For giving dreams are means to step aside from dreaming of a world outside yourself, and leading finally beyond all dreams unto the peace of everlasting life.